Hey, everybody. Well, we got a, everybody's piling in tonight. And they said we had 71 people on last week. That was pretty good. Hello, hello, Western Futures. Trisha, Greg. Greg, good to see you on here, man. You spending some time at home now, not in the air? <laughs> yeah, Greg. Yep. Oh, that's good, Greg. So what do you all, I've got a couple things that I'm going to go over tonight. Uh, yeah, man, people are piling in here. Of the people, what do you guys, hey, Hugh, good to see you, man. What would you guys like me to go over tonight? That, And that's the way I kind of like, I've got, I'm going to go over, um, you know, obviously the indicator, W5T indicators, uh, quickly through those, um, how to find some opportunities on there. And then I've got some little secret things uh, that uh, John Garland and I came across today that uh, we stumbled across it that we're going to share with you on um, drawings and stuff on your chart being able to quickly take them on and off we we came across it by accident literally click the button and found it um so I look forward to sharing that wouldn't have wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't for john john and i talked probably i'm not kidding three hours a day <laughs> maybe more than that i might talk to him more than his wife talks to him <laughs> John, <laughs> man, I wish there was a way I could turn this on. It's automatically muted for everybody, and I know it'd probably be a cluster mess if I had it where everybody could talk. I'm gonna try to figure this out. All right, it's individually. I'd have to click on each one of y'all's names. I tell you what, you know what? Uh, make sure you guys is. Um, Message says to all panelists and attendees. It's only on all panelists. You got to drop down and put attendees, and then that way it'll show up on the screen where everybody can see it. Everybody's piling in. Like I said, it's 703. All right, let's get this. All right, guys can, guys, can everybody see? Hey, Robert, good to have you on there, man. Let's uh, clear out. Uh, did you get some waves in today? Tom, um, good to have you on there. Hey, Jason, good to have you on there, too. Trisha, not a problem at all, man. That's, uh, let me put that on my list. Draw the fourth wave regression channel. Hey, can everybody see my trading view screen okay? All right, Tim, good, good. Not yet, Jason? Desktop only. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to do it again.
All right, how about now? Where's chat? Yes, yes, yes. All right, guys, I have more yeses than I have noes, so it's got to be something on somebody else's screen. Bill, good to have you on there. Long time no see. Couple hours. All right, perfect. All right, we are going to get last week. I had my chart and I had a whole bunch of my lines across there. What I'm going to do, let's go to this daily chart right here. If you're going to put in your, I'm going to go through the 5K club. Um, let's log in at W5T real quick. If you're on the 5K club, you get Paul's support and resistance zones every week. That is not the right one. Hold on, guys. I got two logins into there, one to test stuff and then my regular one. All right, there we go. All right, on the 5K club, click up after you log in, click on your 5K club here and you have download spreadsheet. We're gonna pull this spreadsheet up. More than likely in my luck, it's gonna pull up on the other monitor, which it does. Try to make this box smaller so I can drag it a little easier. Well, good old technology. Come on. It won't let me drag it over to this monitor, guys. But Paul's, uh, let me take a snapshot of this. I think I can drag the picture over. Oh, come on, here we go. There you go. Take the 5K club right off. Ah, darn it. I'm trying everything I can, guys. Anyhow, I'm going to read these numbers off on the side. I wanted to show you picture of it. Let's see if it'll let me drag it over this way. There you go. I had to make Google Chrome small. So you get a sheet like this, comes in a spreadsheet like this, and it gives you a support and resistance zones. Now you can quickly, when you look at it, it'll take you a little bit of time. If you're trading all of these things, you're going to have, uh, it's going to take you just a little bit of time to put these in. These are new zones that have come up because we've dropped so low. We were at all-time highs, so obviously we're not messing around up in the top zone as much. Uh, but once you put these in there on Sundays, you can quickly look at the chart. You know you don't have to mess with anything that's in blue. They're already there. That new is yellow. So you know on DXY, the dollar, you, you drop down, you only got to put two zones in. On ES, let's say that we needed this 33... 3303 to 3303.5. Let me see if I can fit the book on here. What you're going to do is you're going to click this box right here. You're going to go down to price range. And I went through this last week. If you guys, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole entire thing of how to set it up uh, on your price ranges, 
but I'm going to do one for W5T zones. So I, I don't even pay attention to the number. I just drag and put it on the chart. Right click it, settings. There's your coordinates. So we're going to go over to ES3303.50. Now, obviously, this is way up on the chart. Let's go, actually, let's go down. Let's go down to so you have something that's more relevant. 2688. So we're going to go 2688. Second number is going to be 2681. Visibility, you can, on TradingView, you can decide which charts you want to show up on. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave these just for all. So we're going to save that. And then the next one is 2592.75. Once you've already clicked on here and you've selected, if you save, like I have different colors or different things. Once you click on it one time for say W5T zones, it's going to keep that same setting each time you click that until you log off and log back on. So we're going to set the next one. I just, I don't even pay attention trying to get it to the exact number. It's just faster for me to zip through these. So we're going to go 2592.75. And then you're going to have 2580.50. You're going to save it. And don't, uh, and I actually forgot to do this on the first one, guys. Make sure you right click and lock it after you put it in. Make it a habit. After you do each one, right click, lock, right click, lock. Go to your next one, 2554. Like I said, I just dropped one just to put it on there. Settings, 2554.50. And then 2532.75. Oh. Um, uh, a different number on that one. Let's go to the one below it. I need to write that down on my list right now so I don't remember to tell Paul about 25, 2344. Isn't that crazy that we're even looking at these numbers this far down? All right. Then you right click lock. I'm not going to go through all of them, but that gives you an idea on that list. On it. All right. Now, if we had, say we're up here, this button right here, guys, on every one of these charts will break down what's on it. So if you don't want all that writing, you got to have it on there to be able to adjust, say, the uh, LA wave if you want to isolate the wave count, which we'll do that here in a second. You just click it on, and that way you got a cleaner chart on it. Go up here. This is one thing. I was helping Bill earlier. We were, um, I was, haven't been in Think or Swim in a while, and I could not believe how many clicks it takes to get to things um, of how easy it is in trading view. Um, this was one of my things in thinkorswim. I had to grab the bottom and touch it and hold it and drag it across to make it bigger and smaller. And it's like, man, I just love the ease of use of trading view to get the view that you want. And our roller coaster software has really picked up some good moves. Let's go down. On roller coaster guys, Paul writes in his article, um, that you've got to find the groove for a roller coaster. I like to personally turn off Elliott Wave and Bits and just have a clean screen with it. And I just start at two minutes and I just go back and I look at what Paul talks about uh, being in the groove. Is it popping out, you know, nice tick moves? Now keep in mind, this is a two minute chart. This move here, it did stop you out, 2380, took off. There's no isolating, no anything. You just put it on the chart. Whatever I click on over here, 
and the time frame up here, that's it. It's going to be on. There. So if I start on the ES, I just go on two minutes and I look, eh, little winner there, none there, big winner there, big winner there, pretty decent, big winner there, good winner there. This is a humongous one. I, would, I don't think it went 10 ticks negative, maybe, if that. On that nice winner there, nice winner there, nice winner. So this two minute uh, time frame on ES on roller coaster is pretty good. So you mark it on, you know, get your little sticky note and write it down uh, two minutes. Then you go to three minutes. How do we look on it? Uh, there's some decent ones in here that I don't think as well. This one's not bad. Three minutes is okay. So I would put three maybe with a question mark. Four minutes. Yeah, there's some good ones in here. Not as many. On four minutes, um, we have the last uh, couple hours. We have had some. So nah, I'm, that's kind of meh. Five minutes. No. I mean, we had two good ones there. One, two, three. Ah, I mean, there's four or five in there. But I don't – when I get too many of these little ones – I just rule them out. I would rather have a chart that has these over and over and over. These, it has not been bad. This is actually a pretty decent chart, but there's too many smaller ones in here for me. I'd rather wait and have a cleaner chart with less on it. 15 minute, no. I mean, and it, you can just look at it. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out how many big moves. But isn't that crazy how on a two minute, there's moves all over the place, but on 15, you don't see them. Roller coaster. Now, this was a nice, nice move right there. 2403, and we went all the way down to 2176. Nice big move. Let's go to one hour. Not too bad. That uh, there's a couple, couple good ones, but you really got to be. This one was a good one. It went out. It never went negative after it popped out of there. So that, that was a good trade. That was earlier today. And two. On the daily chart, check this out. We have been roller coaster. Pick this up on two twenty-seven. It said to go short. You took it thirty-one eighteen. Went to th went twenty points negative on you, and that's it. And then we've done the whole move down. Now, one of the things, like looking at this chart, I can just look at it and I can see an Elliott wave in here. I don't know if you guys can. Uh, my brain has gotten uh, pretty trained to look at a chart where I can see a one, two, a three, and a four. So we are going to, we're going to isolate on this wave count and then we're going to do a, uh, Fourth wave regression channel break. Yeah. Uh, this one isn't the best one because it's a daily. I don't think that we've gotten it. Let's. We're gonna isolate at the highest point to the left. I like if that's just a high or low, but I like the highest one. So this candle, this is your bar number right here on. Ah, uh, Theo, I don't. They've got the ranges on there. I'll try it here in just a second. Let me let me isolate this one. So this one is candle 5685. So I'm gonna go to Elliott Wave, click that sprocket. 5685. I click OK. Takes about 10 seconds. So lucky there. That uh an Elliott wave pulling up. Now, who knows? This could get violated. We could shoot to the moon. I don't think so. Um, this was actually a fifth wave, one, two, a three, a four, and a five, but it's continued down. So this fifth wave has turned into a third wave. We've pulled back. We have painted the four, but that this could go higher. The only thing that concerns me on this one being, a, I don't like taking Elliott waves on a daily chart just because too much stuff can come in, like tomorrow's news, uh, things that can 
Uh, rusty, um, I don't, I guess I've done it enough for the last year that I, when you stare at the charts all the time, it starts to become a uh, second nature for you to look at a chart and be like, Hey, there's an Elliott wave there. Um, since we are below this six, four moving average, uh, I'm thinking personally with the end of the month coming and earnings reports, everything's going to come out bad. I mean, we all know that every business out there is hurting. So I think this is going to tank back down and we have a fifth wave target of 2094 to 2018. And I, I personally don't think we will have any problem coming down there and hitting that. Now, do I hope we keep climbing? Yes. But I think it's just reality with earnings reports and stuff coming out. I think that this is going to uh, shut down quite a bit on it. That's just my own feeling on it. But on that regression channel, I don't think I can really draw one on this one. I'm gonna try it. You would go at the bottom of that wick to the top of this one. Now, let me take this off of extending. Normally, it's not extended. Okay, you want to make sure you are below. Now I know this is not this is not a good one um, on a daily chart. It, the channel is not big enough really to see it. Basically, that pivot right there at the bottom of that channel, that dot there, you want to make sure you're below that. Now, according to your rules, if you have bits. Your cyan line has already crossed over the yellow for a long time. This is on a daily, so it's not gonna be as clear as the day. You do need to be below the point of control dots, which we already are right now. Your cyan is below the yellow. You really wanna be below the 6-4 moon average right here. That I really wanna be below over here. Um, before you take that. Now, are there opportunities in there? Yes, but I would feel more comfortable. Once it gets below this line here, I think that it's gonna go farther down, but 2271 to 2097, there's a lot of room in there and a lot of ticks. But let's go to a smaller time frame where I can find you. Uh, let's go back to that daily so I can answer the Trevor's question. From the Elliott Wave Oscillator, it appears that three is incomplete. What do you think? Uh, no, it's not incomplete. If you look at it, this was a one. Let me shut these down here. This was a one and a two, and then this was a three right here. Then it was a fourth wave pullback. This became a four, and this was a fifth wave move. All right, then it went sideways, and then kept on going down, and that wave five became a longer wave three and that's where i mean this was pretty textbook right here of indecision day we opened and closed within one tick i think is what it was i posted the other day so um, you knew something was about ready to happen right there there wasn't any more sellers pushing it down that if people start buying and they bought a lot in the last couple of days and so yeah, Trevor, that's, but we're on a wave four pullback on a higher time frame. So with earnings reports, uh, I can't remember what report it was that comes out next or tomorrow morning. Is it jobless claims or whatever it was? Um, that one's not gonna be good. Um, and just with earnings reports next Tuesday, um, I think this thing's gonna tank down into this. That's my own personal feeling. This is not trading advice. Uh, this is just on how to use trading view indicator. So let's go over to like a five minute. And if you were going to isolate this five minute chart, typically you want to go to yesterday's higher low. I, I'm going to go over here to where this B is. This is a low. Actually, I'm going to go right here. We're going to go to this B. That is candle. 96.92. So you just go up to your Elliott wave, click your sprocket. 96.92. Click OK. 
There we go. And you see how many corrections. Look how many. Wow, this is a bunch of them. Let me take off bits so you can see it a little easier. On a five minute chart, there's quite a bit in there. See, we're on a fifth wave, possible fifth wave up. I don't like a lot of bars in the middle of these. Uh, and these did hit, if you notice, this was a three, pulled back to a four, created the wave five, pulled back down, which uh, technically that would be an ABC correction. But the way that this low down here of, where we, of the two, we haven't gone below that. So this has just turned into a longer three. I don't like messy fourth waves like this. Uh, Paul always says seven to 10 candles is where, uh, if this is seven to 10 candles in your pullback, and those are just really good fifth wave moves. When they sit around in here like this, like this one, I mean, hell, we got in here at 1740 and we finally got out of it at 230. So, I mean, that's, how that, I mean, that's like eight hours, something like that. That's too many, that's too long in there. I wouldn't take uh, that move like that. I want something that comes down, touches, and goes on. How do you determine where to restart the count? All right, if I was doing this right here, uh, live on this one, we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna look to yesterday's lower high. I'm gonna pick over in here. I'm gonna say this candle right here. I don't think you would uh, be wrong at all. Just in case there was a one and a two here and a three and a four, I'm thinking that's the way it's going to turn. So I'm going to pick this one right here. Hover underneath it, 10,143. We're going to go over 10,143. About five seconds or so. For some reason, whenever I am on uh, Zoom, I, I'm guessing Zoom just eats up a bunch of my internet because it seems like Everything on my computer loads slower. My text messages. Are... All right. So see, by doing that over there, this was a fifth wave move that didn't make it. Got it canceled and went out. But, uh, now I can go back. I wanted to isolate again. I isolate over here. Let's go over here and isolate off this one. Ten thousand one seventy five. See if it gives us a different, different reading this time. There you go. But technically, it has been violated because we went down below the red. And with all the noise in here like this and evening time, I don't, this is my own personal rules. I don't like to trade in the evening. Uh, most of my losses. Yeah, 2598. Uh, John's got on here. I don't know if everybody sees that. 2598 is the weekly value area high. Keep that number on your chart. You can drop a horizontal line. And I actually have it as a Garland level. Look at that. John's so cool. He even has his own name on my computer. Uh, 25.98. His levels are really, really, really good. Um, so I want to put that value area high up there, which ties right into that fifth wave move. And we may hit there. Um, I just, my own personal thing, I don't like trading uh, in the evenings. I tend to lose in the evenings. Market profile number is what John said that's on there. So, okay, what are the questions we got on there? Yeah, unemployment numbers. Thanks, Trisha. That, uh, and you know that's going to be high tomorrow. I mean, it's uh, probably the highest it's been in 10 years, I bet, eight years. In the LA Way Boss All right, got that one, that one. Now, let's put, let's go to a one hour chart. And there 
Yeah, so let's take off the light wave. And you guys know I like my channels. Now, I personally, let me take these off. I like, I have my channels color coordinated. And I like my 60 minute channel in yellow. And that's only because when I move it down to a smaller time frame, I can see what's going on. Yeah, and you can see this thing respect to this channel pretty well. Now, that is one hour. Now we can go down. Now I turn on roller coaster. And Bill, this is what we were talking about earlier uh, when you guys were on uh, that webinar I had with you earlier. Turn on, look at roller coaster, how it picked this up. It picked up the center channel long out of here. Now, you wouldn't even know that that is even there. So all I did was draw a 60 minute channel on the current trend. Then you t uh, I do it on one hour and then go over and just hit your roller coaster and see where you're at. Nice, nice big move there. Now I did come back down and test your same level. I would have been out when it touched the top channel line. I would have run my stop up right to the top of it when it pulled back. Now, when it pulled back and touched that entry line again, I would have taken it again. That uh, just volumes higher, and it did. It raced all the way back up again. It, it didn't stop you out until right here. If you stayed in it, it would have stopped you out there. But it gives you an idea of, look how close. Let me blow this up a little bit more so you guys can see it better. It just barely stopped it out. Look how accurate the center channel line was that it respected it bouncing on and off of it. Okay, now you take, that was the 60 minute, all right? Now let's go down to 30 minute. Now look what you found. Well, the 30 minute actually had some opportunity over here. You had one opportunity right here. Now, whether or not you caught that one bar that took off like a rocket, uh, you'd have to be sitting right in front of your computer for that. But this one here was super nice. That one took off and just kept creeping up all day long. That uh, technically it stopped you out right there, but if you got in right here, you could have rode that baby up all day. I mean, you could have just stayed in that one. This one was really good too. It came, popped off there and went to the top channel line. Like I said, I would have gotten out at that top channel because I get in and out at the tops of the channel that I have almost got to the point, uh, John and I were talking about this today, that I, we just get burned in the center channel. And if you look here, look how it bounced around in the center channel. How often does it bounce around on the tops or the bottoms? Doesn't usually, comes down, touches, races off. Goes up, touches, races back down. This one here, look at that one there roller coaster. Wicked out, came back in, I did go sideways in there, and then raced back down to the bottom. Most of these uh, moves, I mean, you can see, those are big banks and institutions. That's the signal if you read the Price Action Breakdown book by Dimitri Lanier, that push you in there. This is how, kind of like doing our own thing, plus adding the trade, because everybody has their own style of what they're doing and then add the trade to fifth indicators in there. Okay, that's 30 minutes. Let's go down to 15. Add some moves down there on that break from the center channel line. Took it down to the bottom, the 22, 32, 21, 78. That's a nice move there. Same, but this is another one, different time frame, but same move of going up. Not these weren't very good, but notice when you go over to 30 minute, you had two, two good moves on a 30, not much on a 15. Go down, backwards so the channel goes in there, go down to a five minute and look at some of the opportunities in here. Personally, I would have taken that off the center channel line going up, even though I just told you I get burned on the center channel. That one looked good and came out, based in the middle and then took off like a rocket. But that was a nice, good, easy move there. 2403 popped out of the channel at 2487. That's Jesus, man. That's 84 ticks or 84 points times four. Um, here's another good one, too, that popped off. Let's go down to four minutes. 
And one of the things I love about trading you, you can just zoom your mouse out and it makes the screen bigger and you can zoom it back in like seconds. So looking on here, there was a nice, there was quite a few moves here on four minutes that you could take. Which if you guys are stuck in front of your computer or not stuck in front of your computer, you only have 30 minutes to trade. You know, or let's see, maybe some of you all are at work and you shouldn't be trading while you're at work, but you do. You can uh, go onto your chart and go down to these lower time frames and find these opportunities that are very quick uh, that you get in and out of them quickly. This one, I mean, you're a little over an hour or so there. This one here, let's go down to three. Some decent ones on the three minute, but you gotta think two, three minutes, this goes by really, really quick. I mean, 15 minutes and this whole thing's gone. You can go three. So that five minute is actually a pretty good one. And that's getting in the groove. And I call it getting into the channel that I wanna see a channel of going up and down. And when these roller coaster moves correlate with center or top lines, it's like even extra confirmation on top of it. Or if you're inside the channel lines, you know, you're looking for an opportunity to take while you're in these, you know, like while you're in here, you're like, I don't know what you got a roller coaster move that pops off out of there. So let me look up see. Yes, Rob, uh, Rob, send me a message if you want. I would be happy to do a personal webinar with you and go through my setup. Uh, I mean, it's just so easy to use, uh, and it works on any computer. Uh, it works best on Google Chrome. Plus, you can with Google Chrome, you can publish uh, videos. Those videos I post, I literally just click this publish or record button, um, and boom, it makes a up to a twenty minute video. Post it to Twitter, and I don't even have to leave the trading platform. And then I can actually um, live stream. Uh, and do a private live stream with you too without even using um, Zoom. That's cool, but just send me a, a message on that. Yeah, no, oh, John, yeah, that's, uh, I'm trying to get Garland over to this thing here. He's, uh, he's slowly, slowly getting there. Before you know it though, he'll figure it out before I do. So, all right, let's go. Let me show you something we figured out today. I'm gonna draw a whole bunch of crap on this chart. Just, all right, we already have these uh, W5T zones, and look at that. There's, uh, there's Paul's zone from who knows when back. Came from over here, and look at that. We touched that and took back off on it. But let's, let me just draw a channel. Let's do a 60 minute channel and guys don't pay attention. Let's just say we have one. Let's do a 241 to here. And one to here, one to here. All right, you got all this junk on your screen. You can go down to the bottom right hand side. This a stack of papers with a B is your object tree. Click that object tree. And on there will be uh, everything that's on this chart. So if you look here, if I hit this eyeball, it turns it off. There's that supply zone. There's that supply resistance zone. All right. But if you guys saw my chart, uh, it is a total mess right now because I was doing some stuff earlier on it. Uh, look at this here. Here's my daily chart, and I know this is like drives people nuts when they look at it, but that's how I make my decisions. But I figured out today how to fix that. Leave this here. What you do is you just highlight that one, hit your shift button and go down and highlight all of those. All right, and then you come up here and click create group, click that, you can rename it, 
and I will call this one W5T zones. All right, now I don't have to individually click on any of these at any time. I can just take every single thing off of that chart of the W5T zones. So say you want a naked chart where you can do your stuff, look at your chart clean, same way with the regression trend. Yep, click on there. Boom, boom, there's all three. Click that little uh, folder up there, it says create group. Right click that, rename. And we'll put uh, like so. channels. And then I can turn all my channels on and off at one time. So if I want to just get a nice clean view of the chart of what's going on, I'm like, hey, this looks pretty good. Let's put in the zones. Okay, here we go. I want to see my channels. All right. Keep your chart nice and clean. If you saw how bad my chart looked uh, over there, that'll come in very, very handy. And let's see, what else do we have on there that I have for you guys for 5K zones? Let me show you all how to use the risk calculator. Uh, can you guys see the uh, trade the just in this thing? So hey, Mac always I like my Mac though, keeps me keeps me safe and nothing on my computer. All right, can you guys see the trade the fifth thing all right? Did I put you all to sleep or something? What's going on? <laughs> Thanks, guys. I was just kidding. Uh, but let's say you go to your 5K club and let me put these zones back on here. Oh, and that's something else that I like too about TradingView. If you put in the zone, you just click on it once, and right over here, it gives you the numbers that are on those lines. I really, really like it. It also, um, I didn't know this until I started paying attention, but that is seven points is the spread of that zone and 28 ticks. 12.25 points, 49 ticks. It tells you how many ticks there are in between the zone. It's kind of a neat, uh, neat deal. You can change the background uh, on those style and take the label background and take it off. And then it just prints the number on there then you can save that as a default so that in the future, every time you put one on, it'll just have the number on there. That, and that's what I love about TradingView is how easy it is to customize stuff. Um, I can take this object tree back off. All right, so let's say we have, we're gonna do the risk calculator. And that up there so we have more room. And let's just say that you are getting in at the top of this gap line, or uh, I say gap, so supply and resistance zone. So this one's gonna be uh, support, I'm sorry, 23.44. So say we're gonna take this at 23.44. We're doing ES, your stop loss, we're gonna go, Whoa, 12 ticks. Nope, sorry. We're gonna go 12 last. So we're gonna go 43, 42, let's say 4150. So 23, 41, 50. It's gonna tell you that I am risking 125 bucks by placing a bid at that number putting a stop loss at 23.41, my maximum risk is gonna be 125. And then your take profit, one, two, three, and four, there's your numbers. So if you hit your target four profit, that's pretty darn good uh, 
for what your risk was, two to one. That uh, this calculator is underneath the 5K club. You can do micros, you can do in Q. I mean, all of these are underneath here. It kind of, I would recommend doing it because sometimes if you don't realize how much you're risking and you're just playing along with the market, um, it can eat you away if you're not careful. If it's too much, um, like say the zone is too much, you're wanting to get up here, the risk is too high, just go down to a micro and then you can do the same thing that uh, if you did your 23, 44, what I say the other one, 23, 41, 75. I think if my memory is right. Yeah. So I'd risk $11.25 instead of 125 and then run it up to target force 22. That's a lot better, you know, depending on how much is in your account and what you're going to spend. This calculator comes with the 5K club. It's only, I mean, guys, it's 60 bucks a year and then $5 each uh, live event. Paul puts on two of them a month. Um, just the uh, support and resistance zones are worth it that he puts out. I mean, I don't, that is absolutely priceless. Um, then it's on there. If you guys want to cheat and do a screenshot of that, you can. I'm going to leave it here for five seconds. Ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, that's like the trading seconds. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go up here. There's your zones. Don't say I never gave you anything, guys. Anybody that knows me, uh, if any of you guys are, how many of you are new first time uh, to trade the fifth or to, I guess listening or to me? Yes, Scott, 60 bucks a year, man. That's it. That, uh, hey, Juan. That, uh, now, I mean, anybody that knows me knows me, uh, and I, there's a lot of names on here. I cannot tell you the countless, countless hours, I mean, hundreds of hours that I've spent with lots of, lots of you guys on here. Uh, I am a very uh, open book and to try to help. You know, it's uh, anything I can do to help. That 60 bucks is the cheapest 60 bucks I think you'll spend just to have those levels that you'll, uh, they just work that. And what's funny is those levels typically uh, turn out to be a fifth wave uh, target zone a lot of times on there. On the one hour chart, how far back does it go? Can you look to the candles in 2012? Yes. Well, like, hold on before I stick my foot in my mouth. All right. I have the, oh, what is it here? Let me see. I am the premium whatever the highest package is. If you guys talk to them, um, they advertise it on there for like $59 a month. They had a Black Friday special and then they had a Christmas, like New Year's special for like $289. If you send them a message, they will, uh, TradingView will usually sell you that whole $59 a month package for $289. That's what I have. It gives you, um, it gives you like extra workspaces and stuff, but they told me that it is 10,000 uh, candles, if I recall right. It's 2019, when did you say 2012? Let me go to uh, daily, see how far back I go. I think it's 1997 or something. 2005, 98, yep, 97. You can go back to September of 1997. I think, I think that's when that, is that when the S&P was started? It was back then, I don't think it was. Well, that's how far it goes back. Now, it only goes 10,000 candles, so let me go to four hours. Let's see if it goes back the same. It goes back to 97. Yep, 2016, three of 2016. The lower the time frame you go, uh, it only goes 10,000 candles, I think is what he said. 
I think 10,000 is the magic number on that. Rob, what is it? The supply zones looking like on the ES, if you can go over this supply zone. Um, which supply zone, man, and let me know. You're welcome, Prasad. That uh, 2600 area. Okay. This is a Paul's 5K Club, if I can get my mouse to say here. He calls them sticky support and resistant zones. So let's turn on, let's say, let me add indicator on here. Let me add roller coaster. Okay. See this? This is a, Rob, this is, I'm glad you asked us. Seriously, this is like the best thing you could have asked right now. All right. When on this four hour chart, this thing pops up to go long. You've got to look in your book of how much room do we have for this thing to run between here, which is 24, 27, and the bottom of that is that 25, 80. Now, there's enough room in there that where you take the trade. But if, say, we were right here and you got this roller coaster thing to go long, I'm not going to take it because we're running into this support and resistance zone right here. That it'd just be too close. This, I'd be willing to risk that one uh, because it's far enough away. Same way up here. If you got another one, say right here, just not enough room. Uh, now, granted, the numbers are bigger and longer because this is a four hour chart. Let's drop down to 30 minutes. This 30 minute one here, it's like, 2460, 20, uh, there's some room in there. Like you said, evening time. I don't like trading evening time. It just seems like it goes sideways and then it goes nuts at two o'clock in the morning. How is it indicating where the stop goes? Okay, thanks, Sean. Uh, on trading view, the way the programmers, they do not have the ability to put a hash line, which is like in TradeStation, Thinkorswim, and I believe Ninja, it's on there. With Ninja, uh, Paul's got a live deal, I think April 7th, if I remember right. This red line right here, uh, and let me highlight it. All right, I am going, I'm gonna change this to a thicker line. Change it. See how it made it thicker there. Let me go back and change this one back to smaller just to see. Okay, that's the smaller one. So. That one's small. This is your actual line. So I'm going to make that thick. And already as bright as it will go. Ah, made the whole thing. Basically this red line, it just makes a solid line right next to that green. So when you see that, you see that red line there, there's your stop out. There's your stop loss line right there, which this thing would have taken you out right here. This is where it went out. All right, 26. So yeah, I personally, I don't know if I would take that trade in here of going. There is room, don't get me wrong, I mean, there's a lot of room in there, uh, but I don't like it when it starts getting close up here. I also would tighten my stop up if I was in this trade because you're getting close to this. If you start running out of uh, steam and the volume goes down, I'd be pulling out of that one. Let's go to a smaller time frame. See, there's lots of opportunities in here. Uh, this one here, this is a perfect example of getting out of your trade. I wouldn't have waited for this thing to stop me out. As soon as it went all the way down and it almost touched the support resistance zone, get the hell out, man. It's uh, take your money and run on that one. Um, I like that the uh, stop loss was basically right at that same line 
and then it hit again. I mean, it only went negative eight ticks, maybe, if that. So you stay in that, and thing took off and went pretty well. But uh, same way with this one. This one came off and went well. Not much on that one. Nice big old move on that one. Uh, but like I said, if one clicked off over here to go long, I'm not going to take it because we're too close to that support resistance. Line. So make sure you put those zones on your chart. They'll keep you out of trouble. Yeah, Rob, um, so like, let's see, you said not looking to go short, but using the zone above is not enough problem. Yeah, if there's not enough, like you gotta have room for it to run. And like this, taking it down here, there's plenty of room to run. But if this was, if this activated right here at 2544, now granted, yes, 2580, that's a lot of ticks. That's not a lot of room, uh, if that makes sense, and we're at the top of it. Because typically, what do we do? We typically bounce in between uh, channels or support and resistance zones. And this one did, it got close, came back down. Who knows, we may come back up here tonight and then back down here. Uh, but look how, look how this thing respected this support and resistance zone. It hit it, came back down, messed around in there a little bit, and then boom, shot through it. Came back down, retested it, and then took off. Almost went to the other side. On it, I wouldn't doubt that this thing wouldn't come back up and attack this thing again in the middle of the night. Uh, and then tomorrow, come tank it down. Uh, PW, I'm going to be... Hey, Tom, thanks for coming, man. I appreciate you uh, spending the time. Uh, and any your feedback, all of y'all's feedback... I, I don't take anything personal. So if you tell me it sounds like shit, you tell me it sounds like shit, and then I'll, uh, I have a Yeti microphone upstairs. I'm too lazy to get out of the box and bring it down here. If you think it needs to sound better, I'll bring it down. Um, things that you want to see, you just uh, message me on here or before, and I'll make sure. John, thanks for coming, man. I appreciate it. Um, I'll make sure that I cover on here. All right, what did JB or Christian? Do you mark the charts with limit up and downs on ES and MES? They are right here. This is your limits. I don't mark them personally, but this was the limit where they shut down the market for a while. Um, let me turn off roller coaster. The trading view puts it as a green dot 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 line. That uh, trying to think, no, was there one there too? Yep, there was one there. Uh, yeah, that was another one that shut it down. Yep. But I don't mark them. I don't. I mean, maybe they are worth something. Uh, I haven't learned. Uh, in my two years, I haven't learned anything of, like to mark them or use them. It might enlighten me on it to confuse my brain even more. <laughs> yeah, same as Trade Station. Yep. What else would you guys like me to show you, man? That uh, God, has it already been an hour? It doesn't even seem like it, man. This hour goes by like really, really fast. Like really, really fast. Uh, thanks, Trisha. That I try to come up with something new. I was actually telling John earlier. I was like, "Man, I gotta, I got, I don't know what I'm gonna do new tonight." Um, you know, I'm always trying to improve and figure out stuff on, on Trading View, and we literally just clicked on. Uh, we were trying to figure out how to share a chart, which they say you can't do it, but we're bound to determine we're gonna find a way to do it. And we came across that, uh, turning the, like, basically zones on and off, uh, which is just crazy on turning channels in zones. There we go. 
All right, yeah. Oh, roller coaster on a two minute, say CL. Sure. Let's go. CL. Two minutes. It's also got more screen space. So, yeah, some oil. Let's go back in time. Yeah, there some good moves on this oil. You gotta kind of, on a two minute, there's so many candles, you gotta kind of uh, blow it up. But yeah, this one kicked in at, yeah, it never went negative on you too either. That one, when it went in, it took off 24.67 and went all the way down to 24.17, so 50 ticks. Uh, not bad, that's a $500 move. I think. Uh, oil over here now this one dip back in never stopped you out I mean that's the recommended stop loss and if you notice most of the time the stop loss never gets hit but you guys got to trade uh, what your trading plan is and your account of what your safety level is now this one just got stopped out right here can you install a bar timer on your charts when you say bar timer is that this is what this is right here uh, next to the symbol name and the current price, there's a bar timer of how much longer it is before a next bar pops up. You can turn that off, but I, I have it on. Let's see, settings, indicator, name, label. I don't like those on there because it gets too much stuff on my last. Uh, currents, symbol. Quick, default, status line. Here we go. Symbol. You can take that off. And I believe there it is. It's up here. If you don't, if you want less stuff on your screen, um, I like having it on there. Uh, open, high, low, close. Or change values, indicator titles. Uh, indicator movements. I don't care about those. Indicator values. Wrap text. Somewhere else on here, extend the links of that. Somewhere in one of these boxes, my mind's blank on where it's at, but there's one on here on turning that on or off. I like it on because, especially if you're on a higher time frame, like say a four hour, and you have a channel and you're like, hey, what's going on? Um, we need to close above this price before we take off to the next one. Um, that I like having this countdown because I know, hey, we've got seven more minutes until the next candle pops up. This one's 56 minutes, but let's just say it was seven minutes. And I need to have a close above whatever level it is. I just wait it out for seven minutes, see where the next candle goes. Uh, and it's nice just knowing, and like in the mornings, you know, nine o'clock, market goes crazy. Uh, it usually flips around and goes the other direction. At nine. Let's look on some of these that, since we're already here on oil. If you guys are here, you want to look. Five minutes, four minutes, not too bad. Some good moves in there. Five minute, man. There's some good moves in there too. Really good moves. Fifteen minute, man. There's some nice moves on the fifteen minute. Big moves. 23.15. Yeah, those are some nice big moves, and they barely went negative on those when they took off. This one, let me get there. 24.66. Went 20, 20 cents on a negative on there, but look where it went down. 23.15, and it was up here at 24.66. What is that? 85 and 60, $150.50? Not a bad move. This one, uh, that uh, that one wasn't the best one, but it's a good one there. You just kind of got to look through the grooves. The higher the time frame, though, it's going to be. Most people don't have the can stomach the patience of sitting around and waiting for a long time. So, uh, I wouldn't try trading these uh, longer time frames like that. If you're just going to be in for an hour or two. These two, three, four, fives for a roller coaster um, typically do well. Here. 
James, uh, which time frame do you, well, here, let me, let me say which time frame. We need to go to an hour. I'm going to take off roller coaster or just hide it. And this is something else that I like compared to uh, Thinkorswim. And Thinkorswim is very good. Don't get me wrong. It's just a lot of freaking clicks. If I want to take this off on Thinkorswim, I have to go in, hit the beaker, and then delete it completely off the chart. Then go back, hit the beaker, insert, search through the deal, add it on there, click apply, click OK, whatever. What do I do in TradingView? Boom. There it is. Boom. It's off. I mean, that's how easy it is. But let's do, all right, on a 60-minute channel, I'm going to do a longer 60-minute channel. And I'm going to do a long one from here to here. And all I do is click at the top of the candle body to the bottom of the candle body. I look at it, see if I like it. This was very accurate. This was very accurate. Um, this one was very accurate. So I like those channel lines. Um, they're pretty good. Now, obviously, this right here, there's your gap down. I think, I think that's Sunday, if I remember right. Uh, so this is a nice channel. So I'm going to draw another one. And since I just did a 60-minute channel, it's going to automatically do it. So I just go to the bottom of the candle body to the top of the current one. And that's where we're at right now. Now, how much of a genius does it take to figure out from that channel book when the wick comes out that you go short when it comes back in and look where it went. Plus we're on the center channel line. Look how we bounced off the top channel, came down, used it as support and then pushed back up, came back down. There's your center line of the current trend. We busted through it and we stopped. And if you didn't have this other channel on, you wouldn't even, let's get it, let's take this one. If you didn't have that channel on, you would have no idea that this was gonna stop right here or you know was gonna be support if you take that channel off. You have no idea, you're just in the middle. But having it on there, you knew it was probably gonna bounce back up, which it ended up, it did bounce back up there. And then here, boom, 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 boom takes off like a rocket. So uh, James, so what I do then is after you put that, put those two channels on there, then you go down to, or let me go back to the hour, put them on there and then I turn on roller coaster. See the moves, this roller coaster move was the center channel line up. This one was basically a little uh, above the center channel line, but down. This move here took you to the, I mean, look at the, look how accurate this channel was. It took it straight to the channel line and then you're out. Same way over here. This one took you all the way down for this short. This was a long here, but this short right here took you all the way to the channel bottom, wicks out. There's your signal to go long and look where we went. That went straight across the channel line. Trevor, what do you got? Is roller coaster signaling short? Exactly, James. <laughs> it's like, like when, if you don't have channels on your chart, you don't know what's going on. I mean, I'm telling you right now, it's like you would have no idea of what's going on in that, any of that. That, uh, but you put them on. I mean, what it take? Ten seconds. You know what I mean? And now we got a pretty good idea where we're going. That. Uh, we're either going to keep going on this current trend up or we're going to hit on here. And we're going to push back down and probably go down into this range right here again. Shazam, that's right. Uh, Trevor, what'd you have? The roller coaster signal is short orange above the cyan. Uh, it is the orange. Uh, it's only because I have this channel on here. Trevor, let me take these off. Uh, that orange is actually red. It just looks like it because it's next to the orange box. That's supposed to be a red line. Um, that's just the outside of the box, the way the programming is. So there's nothing. It's not telling you to do anything. Your signal is when it gets down in here. Um, 
typically when it comes down, it usually comes back and retests it, which it did. It came up, and then once it popped back down, then it kept going. But your your entry is for a long. Your your orange is always your stop loss area recommended. It always always still goes by whatever your uh, amount of risk that you can have, and for your account size, you got to make that decision. Uh, most of these, if you look, never get stopped out. That uh, this one, you would have never taken this one because it just there wasn't enough going on in that one. Uh, no volume. You need to see it moving. Going in. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna call it quits. It's eight eleven. That uh, Margaret. Uh, you're welcome, Dusko. Margaret, I have, uh, you can connect your, um, let's see. You can, let's see, you're gonna log out. Margaret, if uh, you can hook your TradeStation account up to um, Thinker, or uh, TradingView. The only thing though, hey, Prasad, thank you so much, man. You have a good night. Uh, the only thing though is I will caution you on this. Many other people that I know, the reason why I quit using TradeStation is because it locks up during, especially during heavy trading times. Uh, I love the platform, it's very easy to use. Uh, if it didn't lock up, I would still be with them uh, that I would use on there. But you can hook your TradeStation account, your brokerage account to TradingView. Uh, you, I use Amp Futures. Um, they have very low margins. It's like 400 bucks, I think, for uh, ES. Uh, and then Tradeavate is another one that's really, really good. Um, I'm going to be opening a Tradeavate account here pretty soon. So, all right, James. Thanks so much, guys. I think I got everybody's questions answered. If not, just send me a message. We'll see you next week, Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Y'all have a good night. Thanks so much.